What is up guys? Welcome back to the Savage Performance YouTube channel. So today we will be installing some high pressure fuel pump upgrade, the upgraded um, plungers, as well as the line kit and the flex sensor to run E85 on a C7 S6. This basically applies to all the four OTs, whether you got an A8, S8, S6, or if you're in Europe or the rest of the world, the RS6, I mean, unfortunately in the States, we didn't get that, as well as the S7 and the RS7. So this should apply to any of these. We are installing the SRM or the Silly Mat uh, Rabbit Motorsports Kit. Um, they send out the lines, fittings, the sensor, as well as the wiring pigtail. So to begin with, I unfortunately already recorded this video. I already did the pump install and I lost all the videos. So we're backtracking a little bit. Luckily I didn't, I realized it before I had everything done. So I pulled the lines back off as well as I will be tearing down a parts pump I had to show you how that gets rebuilt. Um, we just won't be able to put the new plungers in since they're already in the new pumps on the car and I don't want to re-tear them down. Um, we just don't want to do that and risk damaging them. But for now, let's take over and tear down the pump so I can show you guys how that plunger goes in, how the pumps come apart, and then we'll come back and start installing the line kits. All right, so here we have our stock pump in the vise. I like using a vise to keep it all held secure for teardown. And of course, be very, very sure to keep everything clean. You don't want to risk getting any dirt in your pump or you risk ruining the pump. So to begin with, we need to get the spring and the top hat away. So just grab the spring, we'll go upward a little bit. The plunger will actually pull completely out, but I'm gonna to try to do it without doing that. So we'll release the spring from the seat. Just go in here, pop that cap out of the spring and then we'll be able to pull that right out. It's just simply a slotted cap retainer. You can pull the spring out. And then the stock plunger will actually pull completely out, but I like leaving it in just so we don't risk damaging the seal. Next thing you hear is the AutoTech um, removal tool. Just drops in here. There's like a hex shape in there that allows that to fit right in there. And then 27 millimeter socket and we should be able to break that right loose, just like that. That just threads out of there. So it will come apart in varying ways. This one, the whole assembly pulled out Normally this part will stay in inside the pump like that. So I'm gonna do is pull this plunger out. If you can see in there, that is the seal that goes out on pumps and allows fuel to mix with the oil. That seal rides against the shaft here. And as you can see, it starts kind of wearing there, it starts wearing the coating off. This is actually a pump that was replaced due to leaking down. That's why I have it here. But yeah, so this is what it'll look like. We'll go ahead and pull the shaft out of that seal. And now a lot of times just push it down in and that'll pull the barrel out. So AutoTech plungers will come in a box that looks like this. There's a picture of their plunger compared to this one. Looks very, very similar to stock. The only difference you will notice is the AutoTech one about right here steps out. I think it's like a millimeter bigger. Um, so. Basically, you'll pull the AutoTech assembly out. I try to not touch any of this stuff just to make sure I don't get any kind of contaminants on there. We'll go ahead, drop the whole barrel and piston in there. Carefully slide this down, make sure the seal doesn't get damaged. And we can go ahead and thread that back in. Work that in there. Then you'll want to pull the plunger up 
to give you enough room. The OEM plunger can come all the way up because it's not stepped. The Autotech one, because it's stepped, it cannot pull out of the plunger. So you'll, it'll actually only come up to, I wanna say about right there. So to get the retainer in, you actually have to kind of come in and compress the spring and slide it in there. And just push the plunger down, make sure it's all seated. And that wraps up installing the plunger kits. Now it's just simply re reinstalled on the car and we're gonna go ahead and route our lines. The other thing with the SRM kit on this pump, you will remove this barb fitting and install a plug. I'll show you that on the pump that's on the car. But basically what you're doing is you're deleting the crossover between pumps and we're putting a Y in the feed line and routing fuel directly to each pump instead of feeding through the one pump to the other side. So why don't we go to the car, I will point that out on the car and then we'll continue with the lines. All right, so here we are on the car. You can see I went ahead and installed these fittings already. We installed dash eight, or I'm sorry, dash six fittings on the pump. And that will, that is our feed line. See over here, same thing. And then the plug that I was telling you about is right here. You can see there, instead of a fitting there, there's now just simply a plug. So we will be coming off our factory feed, which is right there. Also, I already put this um, adapter on there from the uh, push lock to the dash six. So that's our main feed. That will come off of there drop down here and we'll Y off and run an individual line to each high pressure fuel pump. That will make sure that we have a consistent and the exact same supply to each pump. That way you won't see high pressure fuel um, pump starvation on the one bank versus the other. So let's go ahead, kind of look at the lines and start getting them routed. And then we'll move on to wiring the sensor. All right, so here we got our lines. This long one here, it's gonna go from the Y to the far pump or on the one on the driver's side. This one here is gonna be our feed from the main feed line to the Y or feed like this. And then this one here is gonna loop around and go to the passenger or right side high pressure fuel pump. Then right here we got our high pressure or our flex sensor. That is actually gonna go in between the Y and the feed line. And they send this little adapter to go, a little um, female adapter to go between the flex sensor and the Y. So let's go ahead, get them in the car and go on to wiring. Right, guys so here we have kind of the general routing of the high pressure fuel lines so there's all kinds of different ways you can do it this is generally how i route them um long line obviously we'll start from kind of the farthest downstream which is the second pump on the left side of the car kind of zoom out here so opposite from the intakes long line starts here i drop it down kind of underneath all this wiring and right between the head and the wiring drop it down along here and then I will ultimately zip tie it up to these lines here to keep everything tidy and try to keep it from vibrating and making that terrible noise that some people complain about. The next one here, come out of the fuel pump here, drop down under there and down to the Y. So then after the Y, we've got our flex sensor here and then the line here, which will loop around and come onto this fitting on the actual feed or supply. So when we're all done, this is gonna set. I generally route it where the flex sensor kind of tucks up to the head there by the coil packs, kind of under the intake manifold. So yeah, that's kind of how this is all gonna work. I'll, I'll loop this line kind of back under this and come up around right into there. So now, since I've got kind of my general routing done, I gotta go along, torque all of them down, and then we will be able to prime this fuel system, make sure we have no leaks and go from there. From then it'll be the fun of routing the wiring across the cow and into the cabin to the OBD2 port um, to pick up all our signals and all that stuff that we need there. 
but we'll pick that up once we're at that point. For now, I'm gonna keep going, get this all routed, zip tied up, and all the lines torqued, and then we'll do a pressure check, make sure everything holds and there's no leaks. All right, so on to the wiring. So I already have the reading tray popped out. Um, got the sensor plugged in. Kind of see it down in there. And then the wiring lead, I got under these the fuel lines, run up through the gap for the wiring harness here, kind of around the shock tower. And then you can either follow the wiring harness underneath the strut brace or just kind of go, I'm gonna route mine kind of in this gap and then I'm gonna zip tie it down, secure it real good. Then you'll come across here, and we're gonna end up over by the ECU. Now the ECU just unclips from there. I got it popped out, gives us a little more room. Now there's one grommet directly underneath here, if we remove this, where there's also one right down in there, right there where if you follow that wire, it kind of goes under that tray. So I already have my wire fished in there. I'm gonna go with that one since that already had a hole punched in it from something else at some point in time. So pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these wires, tape them to that wire and just pull them right in through, which will come out in here. So you can see here, I already got the fuse panel pulled off um, and the knee bolster pulled off so we can get access to here. So if we look right there, you can see that wire coming through where someone already had poked a hole and tried to reseal it. Just wanna come right in through there and then tap into our fuses to get our ground fuse power or switch power and the obd2 pin 15. so for now i'm going to get the wiring fished in and then we'll pick up from there all right so hopefully i can do this where it kind of makes sense and you can see but right here we are tapping into this 25 amp fuse which is for the fuel pump i do it slightly different than the tool or than what srm recommends they have you pop this out and throw a tap into the white and red wire or the red and white wire. I do not like tapping into wires, um, even though in the interior technically shouldn't matter. I just hate tapping into the wiring. So I've got a fuse tap here. I'm gonna use a fuse tap, chuck a little uh, terminal on it, and then we will bend it down flush and route the wiring around. For now, take our red wire. Got damaged a little bit pulling through, so we'll snip the bad piece off. Crimp that on real nice. There we go. Got that all nice and heat shrunk down. So let that cool off and then that'll go right there. The white one is gonna get a terminal put on it and that is gonna go into pin 15 of the OBD2 port. So we're going to see here. numbers on the back so it makes it pretty easy to ID and yes pin 15 is in use but it is not needed so you can just simply unpin this one chuck the new terminal in and make sure this one's covered up so it doesn't short out on something and you're good to go so I'm gonna go ahead and pin that one in there and the black wire which is the third and last wire we just need to ground. So there's multiple spots to ground. You can literally grab any one of these um, chassis grounds. Um, a lot of times I'll use this one here on the airbag since there's already a ground going to there. So I'm gonna go ahead, chuck them all in, and then we will throw the panels back on, pull up DS1 and make sure that we have an ethanol reading. So I'm gonna keep going and get this all taken care of.
All right, so we have wrapped up the install of the high pressure fuel pump plungers, the lines and the flex sensor. So we're just gonna kind of go over the finished product and then we're gonna log into our DS1 to see if we have an E or an ethanol content reading. And it's the final step to make sure everything's wired up right and reading. And then this S6 is fully flex capable. This car here has got, we did TS1 turbos as well as kind of all the supporting stuff. It's got intakes, it's got down pipes. Um, they're kind of a custom mix that we did in-house. Um, they are the short China 3-inch Catless. And then in the lower section, we did a custom setup with some high-flow cats um, to reduce the smell and also kind of keep it somewhat emissions compliant, along with giving hopefully a little bit of um, benefit of sound as well as flow. So let's go over this here. You can see there our line kind of comes through there underneath there. Then I have it zip tied securely to the uh, secondary air. Uh, we got another zip tie right there, kind of follows underneath, goes underneath the uh, air inlet duct. You can see the second line coming right there, kind of nicely fits under the uh, cover, the engine bay cover that drops down right in there. You can see the Y with the ethanol content sensor. Everything tucks in there real nice and tight. Okay, there we can kind of see the brown plug. So yeah, everything tucks in there. Then the line kind of goes, yeah, there you can kind of see, comes out of the Y, goes up through here and loops around, comes right up here to the feed line. So completely clean install, really wouldn't even know anything happened. Then the wiring comes from the plug, runs under the intake right here, comes right through that gap and is cleanly installed under the rain tray where it then goes inside and we didn't even know anything happened there. So final step is going to be, let's start the car. And logging into our DS1. So we're gonna go over, make sure we're connected to the DS1 Wi-Fi, and then we're gonna open up Okay, so for some reason my laptop was not cooperating, but we are back. So, as we said, connect to the DS1 Wi-Fi, and then we're going to open the DS1 itself. So once this connects, we should be seeing... Oh, there it is. So yes, we have got an ethanol reading. So I had already kind of mixed what I thought would be about an E50 blend, and it looks like we are right there. So now the only thing left is we will need to go in here make a few modifications to the um, stage three, or actually stage four, and being this is an S6 um, file with the uh, high pressure fuel pump and plungers and flash that. So yeah, we're gonna do that. Um, I got a few tweaks I do to them, uh, mostly due to the downpipes that are on this car. And then we will take it out and see how it drives. All right, so one last test here, and that is grab a log make sure the fueling and everything is looking good we're going to do a very light launch and just run it through a few gears